Yeah, good morning. Um, yeah, so a little bit of a difficult stretch, of course, right now for us, um, something we haven't experienced as a group. So we're, we're learning and growing through this process. Um, was, was disappointed for sure um, in the Oklahoma State game, just thought we didn't have our normal punch and kind of juice is a word we use a little bit, just, you know, thought there was moments where maybe it was about to come through and then just didn't quite have it. Um, I thought we regrouped mentally um, from the disappointing loss, um, tough loss with Baylor. Um, but then I thought when the game started, we just we just physically, mentally just couldn't quite match up, um, you know, just get it to match. Um, so, um, you know, but we haven't had a, a, a clunker or really a disappointing performance really much of the season. Um, so I guess every team at some point you might be due for one. So maybe we got that one out of the way and we can regroup a little bit and uh, had the off day yesterday, which we needed. And now we'll kind of put our attention to TCU's playing really well right now and, and got some pieces back. So just need to find a little momentum here to finish and then uh, get into the conference tournament and see if we can make some noise there um, and then continue from that point on. But um, we'll, we'll get it figured out um, for sure, and then uh, we'll regroup. I guess you're pretty mindful of, of you know having eight available players and the grind and what you've been through. I guess you're trying to bit, you know work that through in your practices and the way you're scheduling things right now. Yeah, I think you do. I mean, regardless of what team you have, when you get to end of February, early March, it's it's been a grind. And you know, in basketball now, we go we start in the summer and it. Kind of, kind of goes. So I think we are on official practice, maybe like 98, I think I saw on the practice plan now. Um, you know, and that doesn't even count the preseason in the summer. So this is, we've been going at this a while. Yeah, we're very cognizant of it. Um, you know, try to take care of their bodies. You limit reps. Obviously, practice time gets reduced this time of year. And, you know, I, we even have some days that are more like the mental days where you're trying to help them mentally than the physical. And then you have a couple days where you want to keep rhythm and, you know, keep the physical going. Um, you know, and, and so, yeah, that's the balance. That's the balance. In the coaching world for us, and uh, talked to a few players yesterday just to make sure how see how they were feeling. And you get back at well, we get back at two or something. I think the other night, so you, you got to get your sleep, and those things are important, and how you eat. So it all comes into play. Um, and I think we're doing okay, though. I, I don't think we're in a, in a bad spot from a physical standpoint. Um, you know, I think we'll recover and be ready to go. As a coach. What do you look for? Is it like closeouts on defense? Is it shooting percentage? What are the things that you look for when you see a team that's getting tired? Well, no, I think it's ener it's energy, it's rotations, it's you know, are you still keeping the ball in front? Are we flying? You know, we use the word fly around. So are we still flying around like we're supposed to on the defensive end? And and some of that we aren't we weren't doing the other day, and that's probably what caught my eye more than anything when we normally you know have that punch. And you know, a lot of times on defense, coaches will will talk about the first rotation, and that's the easy one and then it's the second and then possibly the third one. And so if they put you in that blender, like can you keep going in the blender and then can you get it solved? And if you can't get it solved and reset, then that's when you're in trouble. Um, and, and we just maybe weren't getting it solved as much as we would have liked to do the other day. Mark, how different is this TCU team that you're going to see Saturday compared to the one you saw a couple weeks ago at their place? Entirely, 180. Um, yeah, I don't know if that uh, game plan, even watching that film back, will help us a ton. Um, Completely different. I mean, those two are so good. I mean, these are two elite. Uh, the Connor kid can shoot it, score it. It's elite. That it's the sweet stroke. Footwork is phenomenal. And and Sedona Prince has been. You know, she's just healthy now and uh, always been a phenomenal talent. And you know, plays a little uh, Dirk Nowitzki ish. Can play inside. Can step out. She hit two threes last night. You know, can kind of fade and score over either shoulder. So they're going to present problems. And then the other pieces around them are are really really good and gave us some problems at their place. So entirely. different different group this is the team you know minus still one kid though that was ranked earlier in the year and started I think 14 and 0 if I'm not mistaken um you know so no the, this team is super talented well coached yeah full attention for sure I'm sure you're aware they're 15 and 1 with Prince in the game yeah no yeah, yeah this is no they're it's this is as good of a team that we've played all year when they're right and, and they're getting right at the, at the right time how does she compare to Lee uh, I mean I know size wise they're pretty similar but are they are they different types of players? Yeah, completely. Other than the size, diff completely different types of players. Um, Sedona can play inside. She'll play on the perimeter much more than Lee does. So she'll be out on the perimeter and pick and pop and pick and roll and, you know, catch and shoot at 15 and fade over a shoulder. I mean, no, it, they're very – I mean, I'm saying that with ultimate compliment, but there's, and I'm from Dallas originally, so I watched Dirk Nowitzki a ton. Like there are some definitely, you know, and she's a Texas kid too. So she's, there's some, uh, there's some similarities. So pulling Kylie out isn't necessarily an advantage against her as much as it would be against Lee. Using um, Kylie out and rim running and so forth. Well, yeah, I mean, no, there still could be, a, yeah, there could be some advantages. Yeah, she's, um, 
Yeah, I mean, still with size, you know, there, you know, there's some. We should have some quickness. You would think then, if they have size, we we should have some quickness with certain kids. Kind of going back to what John was asking about, given the manner and the implications of those three losses, like I'm sure it was just as mentally exhausting as it was physically. Do you do anything to hit the reset button here, like practice wise or anything to mix it up? Um, a little bit. Um, I, th I think we're in a pretty good spot. It's it's really more of, you know, just getting back to our defensive I identity a little bit. You know, some offensive offensive confidence. You know, I mean, and we we just need to make some shots too. Like I mean, that we, we can work on a lot of things too. But if we would have made some shots in these a couple of these games and shot it a little better from distance, then the outcome might might you know would be different and we might be feeling a little different about it so hopefully at home we can relax a little bit last game just settle in make some perimeter shots um you know they'll mix their defenses as a lot of teams have so just be ready for that and so yeah just getting back to playing with confidence so yes when you put a game plan together for practice you you build it around the things that you need to get a little bit better at and um and we'll do that anything you can do to help Lauren feels getting going a little bit, get her back to where she was before, confidence shooting and so forth. Yeah, uh, yeah. there's a few things we can do. Um, you know, a lot of it's just on her to relax, and, and she's getting the right looks. Um, but, you know, at the same time, challenge her that you don't – she's more than just a three-point shooter. Um, I think sometimes she settles for that at times when she doesn't necessarily have to. So, yeah, challenging her to find different ways to score and, you know, getting to the rim and get to the free throw line, get out in the open floor and get some layups, you know, and then see if the three ball falls. Uh, but to her credit, she will continue to shoot, and she's a confident kid in it. Even if she's one for eight, she'll still – believe 100%, I think that that next one's going to go in. So, yeah, just getting her to find the rhythm, but that would certainly help. It's, you know, we've talked a lot this year about getting that third and fourth score, um, you know, so the, the two have been there for most nights, and now we've got to find three and four, um, you know, Kaya being one of those two that can really get going for us. And some of the better games we've had, Kaya's, you know, production has been up, and, you know, Jayla's starting to play better again too, and, you know, we'll get production from the five. It's just maybe a little – by committee more than than one person so we we know what the formula is i think we just have to get back to it and i was going to mention kaya you know the demands you have for her beyond scoring defending all the different things she does is that another one you just kind of kind of just work through and get her through these things yeah and i i think she she's had some nagging injury stuff too that's just kind of i think you know hampered her a little bit here but i think she's on the on the good end the positive end of that now um so I, I, that should probably help her relax just a little bit but yeah we've asked her to do a lot and use the glue term you know with her a ton but yeah our, our better games has been when kai's production you know on the offensive end is is double figures and then you know same effort she'll get eight to ten rebounds and so that can be the third or fourth scorer for sure Lauren can be that Jayla can be that you know a post player can be that so uh, we, we know what it looks like we just got to get back to it have you studied the the scenarios for next week uh, I think you have the tiebreaker against Iowa State right by beating Oklahoma correct um, but the other ones are, are the other way so have you really looked into that much or a little, a little bit, bit. Um, you know, the Iowa State got a big win last night yeah. at K-State, so, um, you know, that that helps tremendously. So, yeah, I mean, there's going to be some tiebreakers. Obviously, with a Baylor, we're going to lose, you know, we'll lose that one. A K-State tie, we lose that one. If we get into the three-team, four-team, and those teams are in it, then that's probably not necessarily good for us. Um, so, yeah, it, again, it's focus on a win, and, and we'll figure it out. We've essentially done it to ourselves, I guess, with a couple of these these closer losses, so it's the position we've put ourselves in. And, again, win and find some momentum and get to the tournament and just play whoever's in front of you and, and figure it out. So there's just too much, I guess, at this point. If there's only maybe one or two teams in it, we might have a better answer for you. But with that win last night for Iowa State, that jumbled it up, um, you know, and, and you just never know. So, you know, but if, like, a Kansas State were to lose, you could end up in a, like, tied for third in the league. You know, and that would be, you, you know, and then ball, yeah. and then we'll figure out what the seedings are. But if we ended up in a, you know, third in the Big 12 and got a win or end up tied for fourth, that would be a – that wouldn't be so bad. You know, that means we've had a pretty good regular season and then the seeding takes care of itself and we just go to Kansas City and see what we can do. Coach, in terms of crowds, it seems that the more and more home games, just more people continue to show up for this team. Closing things out here at home this weekend, just how special have the crowds been lately and how impactful have they been in some big games too? Yeah, I know. It's gotten better and better as the year's gone on, which we, we appreciate, we love. Uh, you know, even with the loss the other day, that, that it was electric in there. It was loud in there. It was fun. I know our kids, you know, responded to it. 
Um, you know, and so we just need to continue it. And so hopefully we can on Saturday. I know it's a double header, right? So it's a little bit earlier tip for us. Um, you know, but yeah, we would love the con continued support. Um, our kids have, I think, have earned the right um, and, and hopefully represent everybody the right way in this state and the program. So um, I think it's just the beginning, but uh, man, that was fun the other day and we would love to kind of duplicate that if we can on Saturday. kind of like transfer portal-esque before the transfer portal. She's had four coaches in five years. I know this is your first year coaching her, but just being around her, what has she brought to the table? She seemed really vocal against Oklahoma State. Yeah, no, she was. Um, you know, no, Jayla's, I've said this from the beginning, a lot of our toughness and our identity um, needs to be wrapped up into her. Um, you know, she had that little stretch where I thought she struggled a little bit this year for a couple of weeks, but outside of that has been really, really strong. And I think she's now playing better than she's played all year, shooting it with more confidence defensively. Um, minutes are going up and, and she's earned that right. So, um, yeah, I just think she represents a lot of what, you know, Mountain Air women's basketball is about, has been about and will continue to be about. So, yeah, just really proud of her sticking through this, um, you know, and fighting through it in a, in a year we've asked her to take on a different role. So I think that says a lot about her character and, and who she is. I think the last time we talked about Jayla extensively, it was a lot about that new role she was taking on. Now here, towards the end of the regular season, how do you feel that went? If it was an experiment, or maybe something more natural for you? Yeah, no. Well, I mean, I think every year as a coach, you have those conversations. I mean, they're not all going to start, and somebody's going to have to come off the bench. And at times, it's somebody that maybe has done that previously. Um, but no, she's handled it with flying colors. I, I couldn't have asked for anything more from Jayla from that standpoint. No, she handled it with true class and, you know, bought in, and it's all about the team, and she just wants to go out with a bang um, and see if we can't do something special here late. So, no, credit to her. Yeah, she's been great. Okay, thanks, everyone.